Thanks for watching the Daily Debate uh, Live Wednesdays with Agrit Hussain here on Nile TV International. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and uh, a topic uh, that is actually uh, very promising concerning building the Egyptian character. Uh, as we know that uh, under the directives of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and as he said that we want to build an Egyptian character that is fit for the different challenges of all times. Throughout uh, the last uh, seven years Years and under the leadership of the president and his directives, the government took it upon itself to build the Egyptian character, uh, mainly through focusing on the educational system and also uh, on health care reform. Uh, we do have also more on strengthening the cultural identity and paying attention uh, to sports. And this uh, actually did yield fruit. And we've seen uh, how uh, His Excellency the President had honored the Egyptian youth who had participated in Tokyo Olympics uh, 2020. It was a great achievement uh, for Egypt. And uh, uh, actually, the youth are considered to be uh, today the cornerstone uh, of the country. We're paying special attention to the youth. Preparing the youth for the labor market and also for leadership comes definitely since the very beginning at school, but also uh, during their education at uh, the different universities. Tonight, we'll be talking about the Egyptian uh, character and preparing the youth for uh, leadership. We have all uh, the pleasure to have with us uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Tawab, professor at uh, Munufeya University, and together we'll be reading that uh, important headline. Dr. Ahmed, thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you, Terry, for having me. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank, thank you, you so much. And uh, together, as I said, we'll be reading uh, this important headline, building the uh, Egyptian character over the, seven, uh, the last seven years. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, how do you see uh, and assess uh, this uh, great uh, experiment uh, actually focusing on the human being is considered to be a, a very important uh, aim and a noble cause this is how we are going to enter the new republic right with this uh, sense of focus uh, of the human being the Egyptian in the forefront right very accomplishing very intriguing and at the same time this is a great job for Egyptian athletes let me just tell you at the beginning send a message to um, all our athletes that they have made a great great contribution in our modern history and I think that they are sending a crystal clear message for everyone that by hard working we can just overcome all the challenges they made a great job they raised our flag and they made Egypt among the top countries on the list this is something that would push all of us to feel proud of their performance and they were honored by the president a few days ago so i think that it's a message that everyone should take from such athletes that we can just get our success we can complete our objective by working hard not to have any sense of desperation but just to continue and to go forward in our track and in our path this is what Egypt is doing nowadays. And I think that, let me just catch the word from the very beginning in your introductory part. You just mentioned um, uh, something very interesting, which is um, education and, and the athletes and the youth. There is a strong connection between both. We've been talking about education for a long time because this is probably the powerful key for our success and for our progress. We are not talking about the present, but we are talking about, we are not talking about our present times, but we also talk about our future. And if we would like to shape the future, then we should build our youth. Mm -hmm. So something that is very important here connected with the youth is education. Um, and I really feel proud when I just, when I read a few days ago that there are um, different categories for our universities in our country today. We have public university, and this is what we have gone through before. We have private universities, and today we have international colleges, international universities, international academies, and we have today also electronic universities. Mm -hmm. Why do we have electronic? And before we were talking about digitalized colleges, because we would like to build a new generation that could be qualified for the future 
could be qualified also for the challenges that we probably could face in the future. Yes, taking from your words, building mm -hmm. a, a new generation that is capable of uh, being up to the future challenges, um, well, it takes a lot, uh, a right. sense of perseverance, it takes thinking right. um, outside right. of the box right. and uh, right. also training and coaching, which is considered to be very important, right. how to let the student, how to bring the best out right. uh, of the student uh, in front of me. And I guess right. that uh, you as professors at university are right. working on that daily. Right. right. I think that Reed, you are t touching a very sensitive nerve when it comes to the relationship between the professor from one hand and at the same time his mm -hmm. students on the other hand. Because we, um, in the educational field, we are working harder in order to make something. We are creating new generation. We're going to talk about the developments that's happening nowadays in the educational field, especially in the Egyptian universities. But let me tell you here something that um, I read something very amazing, um, which is um, a huge company like Amazon, they decided to open a new branch in Egypt. Actually, they decided to build um, a, a major hub of, um, of, of, its, um, of its branch, but in Egypt, in Cairo. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that they will hire um, not hundreds, but I would say thousands of um, Egyptian workers and Egyptian students. And such a major, such a huge company wouldn't hire students from here until they are qualified technologically and they are qualified Fully for prepared. having... Fully mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in this way, that's what we are talking about. That's why Egypt decided to build nowadays a major district for electronic colleges. Then we have also other branch for technological universities. The philosophy of education today is different it's from changing. the past. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me mm -hmm. tell you something from the field, from, from um, my from work, that, that's absolutely mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you that um, the Minister of Higher Education, and I want to give him a big salute as well, because there is a decision today not to use the hard copies of the textbook. We're going to make everything electronically nowadays, and this is a huge step. <clears throat> we have young generations using electronic ways, and I think that by this way, there is something that we should work on, the awareness. Internet mm -hmm. today, this is an open world. Internet today, it could have the pros and cons, and so by building the awareness, by making our generation understand what's going on in the world today, and to be fully aware for what's happening, I think in this way, we can just build a very, very strong and well-qualified generation for our country. Uh, definitely. Uh, this is a main aim. And uh, as we all know that uh, the political le leadership does not reclaim the Egyptian character, but also works on developing it, developing the Egyptian character to keep up with uh, the current times by launching the different national uh, projects all over the country. And um, as Dr. Abdel Tawab was speaking concerning uh, the technological district, which is considered to be a great right. leap forward. Right. Uh, also, the building of new cities and right. those smart <laughs> cities are going right. to be like a beacon of enlightenment to right. the world. Right. How do you see the uh, educational experience at those smart cities? And definitely inside the smart cities, there will be and there are actually uh, smart universities. This actually reflects um, Egypt's vision for 2030. Um, uh, there is actually, if we read the vision, there is something very important to be um, uh, thinking about, which is um, Egypt um, um, will be supposed to be a major hub for education, not just in the Middle East, but in Africa. And I have a deep conviction that Egyptians can do that because as you can see today that if we just go to international championships, you can just find Egyptians are making something great. If we just go for the educational field, when I was abroad in, in the United States, I found a lot of Egyptians teaching there, taking higher positions. So in this way, we can just believe in the Egyptian mentality. And I have a deep conviction, as I said before. I used to teach Egyptian students, and I used to teach also American students. And I can see that the Egyptian ones, that they are having something like very, very smart ways. But it depends on the way that you handle the whole issue here. Um, there is also something that is very important to mention here, Tariq, in our context today, which is we are talking about a new initiative that we highlighted it before, that is study in Egypt. Yes. Study in Egypt mm -hmm. plans just to bring thousands of students. So, um, Tariq, let me tell you that the U.S. is considered, is considered the superpower because one of the secrets here is 
education. Mm -hmm. So today, Egypt is trying to make the same. So by bringing students uh, from outside and also sending our students outside, we can just number one increase the income we can increase the, the tourism we can maximize our income and our investments we can also create multicultural environment and mm -hmm. this is extremely important when the we, diversity that when, is there in those smart universities and uh, this sense of having a multicultural around uh, mm -hmm. what would be uh, the benefits of uh, having this educational atmosphere how healthy it is to have uh, this sense of multiculturalism, uh, uh, let me say, right, around. Right, and as you said, the real diversity, mm -hmm. I think it sends a very, very important message to the whole world that Egypt is um, a beacon of tolerance mm -hmm. and Egypt is an attractive place. Egypt is a safe place for everyone. And we are also sending a message that Egypt can contain different cultures. Egypt used to be in this way, and I think that in, in, by having such a strategy, we can just build a strong generation. We are talking about the future. We are not talking about the present nowadays. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I do remember um, Abraham Lincoln said before that if you would like to talk about the future, we should create it. But I think that in Egypt, we have already not just to create the future, but we are shaping also the future by our generation. Uh, definitely, Egypt is shaping the future. Egypt is making history. Uh, very important to, me, to mainly focus on the human being. The human being is our treasure uh, if we are looking into the future. And that's why came the president's directives to build the human uh, character, the Egyptian character. Uh, comes uh, in the forefront uh, in Noble Coast. We'll watch this report. We'll be back. Building the Egyptian character has always been like a far-fetched dream in Egypt until President al-Fatah al-Sisi assumed power in 2014 and put building the Egyptian character on top of his priorities. This has been evident in the Egyptian state's persistence in taking several steps towards that goal at all levels. After working on security and stability, Egypt's goal has been to build the Egyptian character and to improve the standard of living for citizens through housing projects, eliminating slums, followed by economic development to create jobs and activate the system of entrepreneurship. That's in addition to the presidential initiatives such as the Decent Life Initiative that secures a better living standard for all Egyptians. The government is always working on opening new public universities, upgrading all sports facilities across the country to pave the way for Egypt's youth to have a better future. With President Abd Fattah Sisi assuming the presidency of the state, practical steps emerged in integrating young people into various executive institutions within the government. During one of his meetings with young investors and businessmen in May 2014, the president stressed the need to have, within the ministries, government agencies and governorates, a considerable number of young people who have the ability to work and make a difference. In this regard, the head of state pledged to train Egypt's youth on national strategy and security. As the political leadership really believes in the competence and ability of the youth to assume leadership positions and build the state, the governor's reshuffle that took place in 2019 included actual representation of youth to confirm undoubtedly that youth empowerment has come true and is not an empty slogan. It's worth mentioning that President Abd Fattah sisi is the first head of state who created an effective channel to communicate continuously with the youth and know more about their visions concerning the development of the country. This was attained through periodical national and world youth conferences that managed to create dialogue platforms between the youth and representatives of the governments, world leaders and influential personalities. Throughout the last seven years, the country has developed visions to create the new republic in which development rates are in progress, peace and security are prevalent with the youth as competent leaders of the future. Long live Egypt.
Those are uh, the Egyptian youth who have raised Egypt's flag high and really honored the whole country by their achievements. That's why they really uh, deserve to be paying tribute to, as we've seen uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi honoring them and paying tribute to their efforts uh, in Tokyo. And on more than one, one front, actually, we have uh, Egyptian youth uh, excelling in the different spheres, in, in the field of education, and uh, we, we do have even, uh, we have been recording with uh, an Egyptian dean of a university and of a, of a, of a college uh, in Germany and more uh, caters, Egyptian caters and Egyptian metal is an excellent metal. Uh, Dr. Abdetaweb, we were talking about um, education and building the Egyptian character and talking also about those youth uh, right. like uh, Feriel Ashraf who has right. uh, been honoring all of Egypt like Gindi and those uh, great names who have been giving a lot now in the field of sports. We have also uh, after listening to the youth, we had the fruit on more than one level, like right. uh, in leadership posts, you can find right. Right. Uh, today the youth and their representation as uh, deputy governors, as deputy ministers uh, on more than one front. Right, right. And this is what actually reflects what it is called youth empowerment in our society. Yeah. A new <clears throat> concept that we didn't have that before. So in, in Egypt, as a matter of fact, is trying to empower the youth in different leading positions because there is a deep understanding and a deep conviction that they will lead the future. And I think that, and as you know, that there is um, the presidential program for qualifying the youngsters yes. and the youth. This is a wonderful opportunity and I would recommend every single person who would like just to be qualified yeah, for and that. The, the National uh, Training Academy. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's exactly the same like what, what, what it is in France as far as I remember. So by having something like that, I think that there is um, a deep conviction of Egyptian metal, of Egyptian mindset, of the Egyptian mentality. And I think that in this way we can create um, um, the, first, the first step of our future. We are talking today, the, the world today is different from the past. Yeah. So we are talking about new horizons, we are talking about new opportunities. Just the other day I was just opening a discussion with my colleagues about the disappearance of different jobs and the appearance of new created jobs. Yeah. So this is a, cha a challenge. Mm -hmm. And by having such a challenge, we should grapple with the whole situation here. We should also understand that our way of thinking should be and would be um, uh, different uh, because of the challenges that we are being surrounded uh, with. So I think that back again to, because you were talking about the Egyptian character, yes. um, this is something very important because Egyptian character reflects the awareness, mm -hmm. it also reflects our understanding for our history, mm -hmm. for our um, um, our treasures, and mm -hmm. also for our soft power as well. Yeah. Um, when we talk about um, the soft power of our country, we are talking about, uh, number one, it's a generation. We are talking about uh, the skills. We mm -hmm. are talking about uh, how can we create that and how can we move forward. So. Um, there is something positive happening on the ground and we just we by such a program we yeah. can just highlight such positive things in our life definitely let us utilize those uh, positive vibes and uh, build on them and talking about the modernization process and the labor market and as you've mentioned dr ahmed that uh, some jobs did this this disappear right. others right. Uh, are just emerging right. how can we prepare the youth today for the labor market at our universities and with the emergence and the start of the smart universities, uh, right. definitely the approach for learning is going to be different. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. uh, and as long as we are talking about this point, then we should also remember that there are a lot of technological, there is a decision today to create a technological center um, on, on every campus in our universities nowadays. Mm -hmm. Why would we have such technological centers? Because we would like to make the students to be qualified for using technology. But mm -hmm. there is also something that I have to mention here. It is the responsibility of the professor or the responsibility of those who are leading the students. Um, so uh, I'm gonna, for example, I'm gonna take an example about my case. So I started to make a number of episodes for educating my students and educating my followers by um, starting an initiative 
two words in English in order to spread the knowledge for my followers and for my audience. So there is something that is called initiatives and I think that it's the responsibility of each one mm -hmm. to try to make that happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. We would also, like... Also this uh, initiates right. the sense of brainstorming. Right, so, absolutely uh, The right. people would come out with the new ideas. That's absolutely right. So when you talk about ideas, mm -hmm. there is something that I used to have and I used to do with my students Every idea is welcome, yeah, every idea is counts. acceptable, yeah. every idea could be discussed. So mm -hmm. I tell my students, feel free about that, express what you have in your mind, because this is the way of how can we create our youth and our generation in a creative mode. We would mm -hmm. like to have creativity and yeah. we would like to have innovation. Remember that creativity helped such countries like South Korea, like Rwanda, like United States. So we have today the power of such country like in the US or in South Korea we have in the US we have uh, Apple company and we have mm -hmm. Facebook company and in South Korea we have Samsung. It's all about, it's based on creative things and in this way I believe also um, in creativity and innovation in education. Mm -hmm. We, today we started to change our syllabi. We started to change the way of how to deal with the knowledge and with the information. Mm -hmm. Today, knowledge is available by just, by just making one click on your laptop or on, there is no need even to use the laptop, you use the mobile. Today, there is no need to watch the television, I can watch the YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, the, the way of thinking today is different from the past. And so we should deal with such a challenges. We should deal with such new developments happening in our society. So yes. in this way, we can just convince our youth there's something happening on the ground and we should work on that. Yes, uh, there is another challenge with, which is how to protect our youth from what we call the invasion of minds right. or what we call uh, the, the war of rumors. Right, right, right. So they have to be quite aware and you professors right. have a very important to, role to play in that respect. That's absolutely right and mm -hmm. this is, can be summarized in just one word, awareness. The, the point here is how can we create and how can we build such um, 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 aware um, youth. This is something very important. It happens by different pillars. Number mm -hmm. one, it happens by reading and educating them on the right track. It ha um, in my humble opinion, it also um, it helps in the way when I just uh, build up their critical thinking skills mm -hmm. so in this way uh, students can think differently and this is what we are trying to do yes we would like to make um, our students to build think their character uh, let them have uh, a perspective that's absolutely right mm -hmm. and by having such initiatives like bringing the students international students on campus then we can just create what it is called the diversity mm -hmm. the cultural diversity that can help um, one of the probably the soft power of our country is just to, to send a message and to have different generations together. We have, for example, Al Azhar, um, Al Azhar University and Al Azhar institution. Yes. They send the scholars and they send the students and they bring the students here also. Mm -hmm. It's the same for Cairo University. At Manufia University, there are a lot of developments happening on the ground. So we are bringing the students on campus in order to exchange yeah. not just the culture but the knowledge, but ideas, and in order to build something like a solid hybrid generation at the end that can serve our country. Yeah, integrating uh, the young with the different executive institutions across the country. Right. And uh, this is considered to be a lovely experience right. because uh, right. it, it is reciprocal. Right. And they are right. also going to um, maintain uh, uh, this rapport with those who are experienced That's and uh, definitely they can learn a lot. So right. how do you see uh, this sense of mingling? I think that really it happens by bringing the students in a practical way of the knowledge. Um, in the past we suffered from the disconnection between the students needs and the market needs. Mm -hmm. We suffered before of, of such a disconnection between what we are doing in the classrooms mm -hmm. on campus and what the market really needs. And application. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So today we are just uh, trying to uh, bridge the gap between the two sides here. That's why I actually I uh, feel um, uh, very, very um, 
supporting for uh, the Minister of Education, Dr. Tarek Shawki, for what he's doing. He's trying just to build a new generation by using such technological mm -hmm. uh, mindsets. Um, yeah. So because this gap that should be handled in a very careful way, um, another challenge that we had before that was the education was um, uh, very costly and at the same time we had um, a very huge number of students without without high level of quality. Today we are talking about the quality of education. Yes. We've been talking about how to increase the quality of education in different ways because at the end we would like to make our generation to be competitive with the international standards. Mm -hmm. As I said that we have we're going to have different companies coming to Egypt and to op open new generation, new branches in our country. So I think that um, this requires all of us um, to be qualified for such um, uh, new opportunities that can help our country at the end. This is what we are looking for. We would like to open our country for the international market because yeah. to put our country on the international map this is what we are looking for then. yes and this is what is happening actually in the new republic marketing egypt to the world uh, we, we've seen uh, the new administrative capital and uh, we've seen the different smart cities with the uh, unprecedented leap in the field of construction uh, and also uh, the president talking about uh, through the decent life initiative concerning providing uh, safe housing to Egyptians and the youth also while they start their uh, new life they can find a decent home. Right. Uh, I guess that uh, this definitely adds to their sense of self-confidence and stability right. in the first place, providing a healthy environment for them to grow. That's absolutely right and it also give, um, it gives something like um, a huge meaning for dignity of the human character as well. That when, yeah. when we just see that uh, the Egyptian uh, citizens today that they can find a safe and um, mm -hmm. a, a wonderful place to live in. You can just see the great accomplishments happening on the ground. Um, that's such a major projects that we um, have going through. I think that um, what we really need is we would like to market for what we are witnessing nowadays. And I think that by just talking about that and by having that sense of um, um, educating um, our youth for such um, um, a new developments happening in our country, then we can just find a way. Remember that today that in Egypt we are offering different scholarships for international students to come and Egypt will uh, be sponsoring uh, all the costs for international students. Yes. Um, there is a huge step here happening that we can bring genius mindsets to help and to serve in our country. It's exactly what's happening in international countries like in France, in the United States, and in, in Asia, in Japan, in South Korea. I think that Egypt, while in the past, was doing something like that, and today we are just making that uh, coming in a, a more practical way by using technological devices. So I think that today, Tagreed, if we would like to make anything, I personally, I do that electronically. There is no need to use papers anymore. And when it comes to the way of having electronic commerce and the trades, for mm -hmm. example, so today the situation is different. There are. When I ask my students, what are you doing nowadays, they tell me that they do every single job online. Yeah. So I can just see the change happening on the new generation. Mm -hmm. They are thinking differently. Yeah. And I think that this is what we need. We need a difference in the way of thinking in order to make a creative and innovative mindset at the end that can serve our country. Yes. Uh, another also milestone uh, <clears throat> happening in Munofeo when the president was talking about uh, providing healthy meals for right. uh, the students right. Right. Uh, at the inauguration <clears throat> of the food complex. Uh, that is considered considered also to be a very important hit because uh, we uh, it starts uh, since the very beginning you right. build the Egyptian character through also focusing on the kids right, uh, right. at school right. and later in universities right and so that means that there is very special caring for mm -hmm. the students for their health for their way of having the knowledge, for their way of being educated. Um, there is a special caring for um, every single aspect that can affect positively on the character of the students. And this is what we really need. Mm -hmm. We would like to um, have a new generation that probably could um, have another way of thinking and another way of handling and the grappling with different challenges because we, we will 
um, uh, sooner or later face such a challenges in such open world today. And I think that we should be very well qualified and protected uh, by having such um, um, new mindsets that can really help to build the generation. Yes, definitely new mindsets. And uh, uh, this is what we're talking about, also branding Egypt uh, globally. We'll be talking more about branding Egypt globally right after this break. Stay tuned. So we're working through more than one front in Egypt, working locally for changing uh, the quality of life, for a better quality of life for all Egyptians, and also working uh, internationally concerning uh, branding Egypt's name globally. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, concerning branding Egypt uh, globally, this is considered to be also a very important and a noble dimension that we're working accordingly. Money. and uh, also uh, through uh, the Ministry uh, of Tourism and Antiquities and the Ministry of Culture, uh, both combined, and the media, of course. Right. This can help uh, brand Egypt globally. That's absolutely right, Harry. And this is why there is, as I said before, and I, I'm, I'm still actually um, um, very, very um, understanding for something like that, that the connection between education from one hand, tourism on the other hand, um, between education and investment, between education and marketing. And I think that um, by having such initiative, a study in Egypt, I think that we are making wonderful marketing for our country abroad. Remember that there are a lot of Egyptian scholars uh, nowadays, mm -hmm. or during the time that we are talking, that they are um, educating, studying, teaching, learning, training in different institutions, international institutions. And I think that, um, and I remember when I was in the US, when I was just mentioning the word Egypt, people were amazed by the name, by the heavy weight of the name. We are talking about the history, we are talking about geography. So people are actually, they have wonderful, wonderful memories when it comes to the word Egypt. And yeah. I think that we are nowadays, we are working on how to uh, market such a name and at the same time how can we get the best benefits of our scholars abroad. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I remember that there is a strong, um, a very, very intensive and strong networking today uh, created by the Minister of Higher Education to build such a communicative channels between the professors and the students here in Egypt and the professors abroad. Today we can just find a lot of surgeries and medical operations happening in Egypt by some professors abroad. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it happens at the same time. So yeah. I think that it, it sends a very important message that Egypt coming on the top of the international standards when it comes to education. And that can really help at the end for uh, the education process. I am a firm believer that education can probably uh, move our country forward and can also help um, in marketing for um, um, our country. Yes, uh, um, branding Egypt globally is considered to be a very important uh, idea and a noble cause or also uh, going in, uh, hand in hand is building the Egyptian character. How can they both combined uh, right. make uh, a different reflection? Right. I think that we, mm. rem remember that we have in our country one third of the global antiquities. Um, yeah. And so um, when we just when we talk about the historical aspect of our country, people sometimes feel amazed for that. Um, mm -hmm. Not just abroad, but even inside Egypt. Um, when we just consider the the uh, iconic figures that we have nowadays um, in the sports, um, mm -hmm. um, in education, in science, so we can just find that there is a strong connection if we just bring all of such keys together, we can create what it is called the modern um, Egyptian character. So yeah. this is something very important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've been talking about how can we develop that and I think that by having um, uh, such uh, responsible um, in institutions that can really make um, 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 such ideas coming true. So mm -hmm. I think that something like this would really be very helpful when it comes to building a mm -hmm. new generation. Um, we are talking today about um, providing funding to educational institutions. We are talking about providing support 
for every person who can just make something for his country. And I think that what the athletes did um, uh, during the past few days, it was something amazing. And that was a great, great um, opportunity um, to see the Egyptian flag and the Egyptian identity coming actually very, very clear among uh, different countries. So this is something that we can just think about that. We can just get the lesson here, which is um, by, having, by having hard work and by um, having the patience, um, by having the awareness, I think that we can move forward at the end to serve and to help our country. Uh, definitely. And also our youth today are always in need of uh, icons whom they can right. look up to, right. of role models. <coughs> uh, I guess uh, that Feriel Ashraf is considered to be a great uh, role model for right. uh, all the right. Egyptian youth. And uh, uh, also with the interviews and statements on her behalf, we've seen how she is working hard, right. how she's keen on training and at the same time she's uh, excelling in education so education and sports uh, combined right. make this uh, uh, com combination formidable un unbelievable right, you know right, right, uh, uh, right. enthusiasm to achieve more that, that's absolutely right there is a combination and very strong correlation between education and sports it helps in making healthy uh, students at the end it also increases that sense of enthusiasm it creates that sense of passion it makes the students to be looking forward for yeah, the future yeah i would like to be like Ferien. that's so. absolutely Right. We will have today those examples right. Right. of Role the models. youth who wish that they are going to achieve like uh, our heroes. And, and this is what our mm -hmm. students need nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, they need role models that they can help them and they can guide them on the right track. I think that this is what we really need and I think that every person could be probably a role model uh, for his followers, for his students, because at the end that they are looking for a guiding person who can tell them um, what should be done in order to um, help and serve um, his or her community. Fariel was an example for that. Uh, Mo Salah, another example. So you have iconic um, in different fields and um, by having such character, I think that it, we can make something like a bright full future. Um, as Martin Luther King said before, I have a dream. So I think that today I can see the dream of my country coming true by uh, building new generations, by overcoming the challenges, and in this way we and can... And the new make, republic, definitely. And new republic, as you said mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. beginning. And in this way we can make our country to be the top among different countries on, in, on the international levels. May our country be always on uh, the top. Uh, long live Egypt. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdetawe, Professor at Menofea University, for coming to the debate live tonight. Well, always a pleasure to be with you, Tanabi. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, dear viewers, for joining us. Uh, well, we'll meet again next week. Until then, have all the best.